Hi, my name is Masaki Sugisaki, and this is the Great British Chef Signature Series. Japanese cooking is all about simplicity and all about ingredients. All the elements need to back this main ingredient up without covering them. For me, keeping the texture of the each ingredient is the key. Sometimes people are bashing it, bashing it, bashing it. That is against Japanese cuisine's philosophy. This is the kind of dish I personally really love as a Japanese living in London. So I hope you enjoy it. Today I'm going to be cooking a tuna tata served with tsukuri soy, cured egg, and then cured caviar, and finally British wasabi. Okay, so first thing first, we're going to start cooking the special soy sauce. I am using the two different kind of soy sauce to start with. One is the usual soy sauce, and this one is called tamari soy. As you can see from the color, especially if you see this edge, the thickness and depth is completely different. I'm utilizing these two different characters by mixing together with Japanese uh, popular staple kombu, and followed by mirin, sweet sake, then finally this amazing bonito flakes. By combining this in the right order, right temperature, right timing, potential of the soy sauce can be uh, uh, onto a complete next level, which can be used multiple uses. First thing you do is to uh, clean the kelp by using a lightly damped cloth and then tap it clean like this. When you do this, please be careful. As you can see, there's uh, some white uh, powder uh, coating on the surface. This is the part of the umami flavor, so I want you to keep it. Now it's ready to be used. Next stage is to add normal soy sauce and mirin. This has been used for so many different purposes, but mainly adding the gentle uh, sweetness in there. Okay, so it's been two hours. Um, kelp is totally ready to release the flavor into a liquid. Now you can heat up, start heating up. Um, however, the best temperature for the kelp to infuse the flavor is 60 degrees to 65 degrees in between. If you go past too quickly, there's not much time for kelp to release the flavor. Right now, temperature, it became at least to a 60 degrees. So now what you can do is to bring the temperature up now to the 85 degrees. Now the temperature is to 85 degrees. You can see the, uh, the surface of the soy sauce. It should start creating this scum like a little foam on the surface. And now this is a perfect temperature for bonito to release the flavor. So you add up the bonito flake at one go. As you can see from the shape, it released the flavor instantly. Now it's been two minutes. All we need to do is just add this aromatic rich tamari soy into it and then let them sit for a couple of hours. So there we are. Um, this is a special homemade uh, soy sauce uh, called tsukuri soy. All you need to do is uh, to let them sit for a while and then pass through the uh, muslin cloth. Then it's ready to go. So next step is to prepare the cured caviar. So what I'm using is that uh, the traditional Japanese technique called kombu jime. Kombu has got tons of glutamic acid, just like a tomato, for example. We are utilizing this glutamic acid to be on top of this beautiful, beautiful Ocetra caviar. How you do is pretty simple. First step, any kind of bags like this, um, uh, in my case I'm using the backing bag, but it's uh, any kind of sealable bag would work. All you need to do is that 10 grams of kelp, and this is the 10 grams of cooking grade sake. And then close the, uh, the seal and keep it in the fridge overnight. So the kelp is now ready to be used, as you can see. Now it's soft enough and moist enough. So all you need to do is take 15 grams of caviar for four people and then try to fill only the half of the kelp lightly spread fold it into two then wrap it with a cream film and then let them sit in the fridge for two hours so now is the main uh, ingredient uh, beautiful tuna polo 
Now, this tuna is a bluefin tuna, and my supplier called Belufago, they are trying to farm them in the most sustainable way. So, therefore, I'm using this product. And in terms of flavor, is the best tuna you can get. So, when you slice the fish, you need to utilize a whole length of the blade. Hold lightly, gently, just to hold your hands and pull your knife all the way. And there you go. As you can see, the shiny surface is coming out. This is the sign that you are keeping the delicate flavor as it is. This sliced piece to be cut into a dice, small dice, like a two millimeter. Always, before you cut, imagine in your head what kind of texture you want to create. Sometimes this fatty part of the tuna can be a really chewy or stringy in a way. To avoid it, this is the right texture for you to aim. Okay, so next stage is to prepare the wasabi. So this beautiful, beautiful wasabi is actually grown in Britain. We used to import fresh wasabi from Japan. However, the, uh, the freshness of wasabi is the key. And when I found this one, I was amazed with the quality. So I will show you how to prepare the perfect wasabi. How you use is that always use from the top side. Reason being is that this side, as you can see, it is still young and mature. The flavor you can get is totally different, nothing compared to this part of it. So now, all you need to do, just a scrape off like this. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, thin skins coming out, but this is all you need to take off, nothing more. Now it's ready to be grated. This is a traditional Japanese grater designed for wasabi, which actually this part is made out of shark skin. So automatically, is gonna grind this wasabi into a, such a tiny, fine consistency. On top of it, I'm using the uh, special technique. Basically, after you grate finely, sugar will help extract the juice out of it and then the more, create the more surface to attach to the air. So that is maximizing spiciness and aroma. And when you grate it, you want the gentle, gentle, gentle movement like this. If you grate it aggressively by rough surface, you can get out like um, half of the potential it has. Okay, so now finally assembling. So starting with seasoning the tartar with scuri soy, uh, flavor enhanced soy sauce. So just a little bit of soy sauce and mix it. Nicely coat it. If you have a time to um, set the side for like a couple of minutes, that is gonna be the best uh, solution. Once it's mixed, you just need to place the ring in the middle, starting placing the solo tata in the middle. Next thing, using the back of your spoon, you make a flat surface. Now you need to gently take off the ring and then uh, start to finishing off the dish. Let's use the spoon to uh, pick up some good amount of caviar. Now the combination of the caviar and the toro uh, is amazingly good. And then for this case, we are actually expanding that, taking it into the next level. So there's the hack for umami. So next thing is the soy cured quail egg yolk. Take out the egg yolk and then place it on top. And then finally, good amount of wasabi. So here, this is my tuna tata with tsukuri soy, cured caviar, cured egg yolk, and the British wasabi.